Welcome to the Whole Enchilada, a community of high achievers that fight the status quo, rebel against mediocrity, and make life happen. Let's go. You ready? Hey, Enchilada Nation. Hey, Enchilada Nation. I am super excited about my special guest today. I know I say this all the time, but I have incredible guests on my show, but I have a particular love for my guest today as my guest is my youngest of four daughters, Grace Green. Grace, thanks for being on the show with me You're today. <laughs> I've been super excited about this. So what should everyone know about you before we start talking about hard work? Well, I'm nine years old. Talk louder. Well, I'm nine years old and, um, and I, have a pet. I have a bunny named Clover. I do the violin and I do dance. You do, and you're in fourth grade? Mm-hmm, yeah. well, I just really finished third grade. So you're getting ready for fourth grade. I already say that you're in fourth grade because that's coming, right? <laughs> yeah. I used to do that when I was a kid. I'd, like right when I was graduating and coming into the summer, I'd say, oh, I'm already in the next grade. <laughs> okay, so today, we're not gonna talk about sloths. No. We're not gonna talk about bunnies. No. We might talk a little bit about bunnies. Yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> maybe a little bit. But we're gonna talk about hard work. Hard work. Are you a hard worker? Yeah, I think. You are you are a hard worker. Can we all get better at working hard? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. But Grace and I were talking the other day about hard work and we decided to do a podcast to understand from a nine-year-old's perspective why hard work is important. So Grace actually went and wrote something about hard work that she's going to read to us to start our conversation today. So do you want to read this? Um, okay. Read it out loud so we can hear it. Okay. Hi, my name is Grace Green and me and my dad are going to be talking about hard work. I think that when you make a goal, you can't just have it done right away. There are three words that describe hard work. Practice, never give up, and learn. First, practice means you do it every day and improve every day. Next, never give up means that if, you work, if you're working hard and then you stop doing it. Last is learn. Learn means if you finish your goal, you learn something new. And I hope all of you learn something new. And that's why I think working hard matters. Love it. And I love that you broke it down into three things. And I think we should talk about all three of those things for a minute. So you said, let's actually look at this again. It says, there are three words that describe hard work. Practice, never giving up in what you learn from your practice, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about practice for a minute. So for example, one of the things that Grace does is she plays the violin beautifully. So how long have you been playing the violin? Almost two years. Almost two years. And how often do you practice the violin? Uh, every day. I take a break every day, but um, one day, but every day I have to practice for 30 minutes. So you get out of seven days, you get one day that's a break. You get to choose your day that you take a break, but that means you're practicing for six days, six days of the week. And for how? 30 minutes. For 30 minutes. And is it 30 minutes where you're just kind of like, oh, well, I have the violin out? Or do you have a game plan around your practice? We have a game plan. We have this little list that we have to check off stuff. And try to talk a little louder so they can We have this it. list that we try to check off stuff. Awesome. So you, have a, you actually have a game plan with your practice. It's not just, oh, I'm just going to practice to practice. You actually are doing very specific things, right? Yeah. Do you have a violin coach? Uh, yeah, I do. My mom. <laughs> your mom, mom is amazing at helping you with that. But you even have a violin teacher, huh? Yeah. And what's your violin teacher's name? Uh, Miss Julie. Miss Julie. Do you love Miss Julie? Yes, yeah, she's really nice. She is so nice and she's so good to you. She loves you. When you go see Miss Julie, does she just listen to you for a few minutes and be like, Okay, that's good. See you next week. No, she, she um, if I have a little um, problem and I mess up, she teaches me how to fix it. Is that hard to hear when, like, th that's called critiquing, when someone critiques or says, oh, you're not doing that right, you need to do it like this. Do you feel like that's hard when she does that? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes? It's, it's half for half. Do you think it helps because you love Julie that you're willing to listen to her? Mm -hmm. okay. It helps because then I can hear that's wrong and then it makes it more prettier. Yeah, I love that. And I think, I think practice is so important because if you don't practice, like, for example, one of the things Grace did, you may have saw this on our, our social media this last week, Grace played a, a solo in our church congregation. So you got up in front of hundreds of people 
uh, as a nine-year-old and you played your violin in front of all those people, which is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Were you nervous to do that? Yes, very nervous. Which is okay to be nervous, right? So I that's get, how you learn. That's how you learn. So do you know sometimes I still get nervous when I get up in front of, and talk in front of people? And I do it all the time. And people think, oh, you never get nervous. But I get nervous too. Everybody gets nervous. Everybody gets nervous. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It, it's only a bad thing is if if you let you your nerves make you choose not to do it, right? So if you would have come to me before and said, Dad, I'm too nervous. I'm too nervous. I don't want to do it. And you chose not to do it. Then your nerves would have won instead of your courage. And courage is better than nervous. It's Yeah. It's hard. Um, cool. Like it's interesting because feelings can like change your mind about stuff. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. You you have all these thoughts and feelings, and we get to choose: Are we going to listen to the negative uh, thoughts and feelings, or are we going to choose to listen listen to the positive thoughts? And you I listen to courage. Positive. Yeah, you you did. You listen to courage, and <clears throat> one of the things I love, uh, I think it was for, I think it was for your last violin recital mom told me a story where you guys were driving to the violin recital and she said um grace are you nervous and you said do you remember what you said i'm super duper nervous she actually told me that you said something different at that time and maybe it was you trying to convince yourself but you said i'm actually really confident do you well, wait was that how far i go was yeah. So I did feel confident on that one. Oh, you did? Because I practiced so much. Yeah. That I felt confident. And she told me later that night, she's like, you'd be so proud of what Gracie said when I asked her if she was nervous. She said, without even skipping a beat, that you feel confident. And that shows me that you did enough practice that you felt confident in the performance. I love that. So I think, I love that you put practice first because if you're not willing to put in the work, uh, the hard work of practicing, you can never expect good results, right? If you don't practice dance, you don't practice violin, you don't do your homework, chances are you're not gonna do those things at a high level. But if you'll practice and really commit your practice, you can do anything, right? Mm -hmm. Love that. Yeah, which goes into never give up. So our, be honest, don't lie to me. Okay. <laughs> are there times that we say, Grace, it's time to practice the violin. And you say, oh. <laughs> sometimes you don't feel like it, right? Yeah, sometimes you have to wake up super duper early before school. And then I'm like, so I bet my mom's like, Grace, we have to practice violin before breakfast. And I'm like, one more minute. <laughs> uh, one more minute. And then one minute goes by and you say, one more minute again, right? Yeah, and you just don't want to do it because you're so tired. But what, but how do you, so how do you overcome that and never give up? How, well, how do you I overcome think, those feelings? I think about, um, that I improve and then I think about this is going to improve myself someday to be a good violinist and if I don't do it then I won't be able to become what I want to be. That you sounded like a 20 year old when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right because if you don't learn how to do these things because guess what what do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, a florist. You want to be a florist right? Or a violinist. Or a violinist, so even, and you can be anything you want to be, but let's say if you're a florist someday, do you think you're going to play the violin while you put flowers together? No. No, that doesn't make sense. But do you think learning to work hard today as a violinist will help you be a good worker as a florist someday? Yes. Yeah. Because it teaches you how to work hard. Yeah, that's exactly right. So I, the thing I love about what you're doing with your life right now is that you're really committed to practicing and working hard at violin. You're committed to work hard with your dance, whatever you're doing. Oh, and we got to mention that one thing Grace does is she breeds bunnies, which means yeah. she has, how many baby bunnies do you have right now? Wait, are all of them No, adults? just, the, just the, the babies in this batch. Oh, two. So this time we just had two in this batch. Yeah, but every day I go with feed and water every single bunny, including mine bunny. And she does the hardest job with the bunnies, which is petting them all day long. Because <laughs> you love to pet your bunnies, huh? Yeah. She loves to play with her bunnies, but you also take care of them. All these things that you're doing that are hard work, it makes me happy because it knows, I know as your dad, that someday you're going to be a hard worker when you go to college and when you get your first job and when you become a parent, you'll be a great hard worker too. It makes me so proud of you. So I love what you wrote here. What else should we talk about with hard work? What's important for people to know about hard work? Um, well, 
what we did do never give up so what i said on this paper is that if you're working hard and you just stop doing it that's that's giving up because if you're like working hard and then like you're like this is too hard i'm just gonna stop then you never do it again you just give up yeah but if you don't give up you'll learn how to um do it really good i love that you put never give up do you want me to sh can i share a story with you yeah about when I was, I'm trying to remember what grade I was in. In fact, I think I was probably almost your age. I think I was in fifth grade though. So maybe one year older. I took karate as a kid and I loved it. I loved going to karate. I looked forward to it every week and it was hard work. My sensei made us do push-ups on our knuckles and it was hard. So we'd have to do push-ups and I felt so cool and I loved it. And um, at school one day, I heard somebody say, one of the cool kids, and I'm using air quotations for people that know, yeah. the cool kids, <laughs> some of them thought they were really cool, made fun of karate. And guess what I did? What? I quit karate after that. It was something I loved doing, and I quit because someone else that I thought was cool said karate wasn't cool, so I quit. And guess what? What? For the longest time, I regretted it. Do you know what regret means? Yes, it means that you you like weren't happy with what choice you made. Yeah, I felt like I made a horrible choice because I really loved karate and I wanted to get my black belt. And if I wasn't willing to practice and I wasn't willing to go to karate, do you think I deserve to get my black belt? Nope. No. So, but what do I do today? A lot of karate. I do a lot of karate <laughs> now, huh? So here I am. So let's see, in fifth grade, you're, is that 10 or 11 years old? So yeah. let's say 11 years old when I quit, that was 30 years ago for me. <laughs> that's, a, that's a long time, I am yeah. old. So 30 years later is when I finally said, I regret that decision enough, I'm gonna do something about it. And so I started karate again about, well, I guess it wasn't quite 30 years, because I started karate like seven years ago, six years ago again. Um, but I don't want you to have things like that that you regret when yeah. you're older, right? You never let people choose choices for you. Yeah. You have to tell your heart what you want to do. Man, you are, you are way wiser than <laughs> nine years old. You must have really good parents. Yeah, I do. <laughs> but let's be honest, your mom's better than your dad. She's the best. No, I think you guys are the same. <laughs> well, I love that you say that because you have to listen to your heart. And if you don't know inside your heart what you want to be, then it's really hard to make the right choices of the right things to do and where to work hard, huh? Mm -hmm. I love that. So all these people that listen to my podcast, they listen to a lot of stuff I talk about, but I want you to tell them what's one of your favorite things about your daddy. One of my favorite things about daddy is that he's a good snuggler. <laughs> I, I am a good snuggler. <laughs> I don't think they've heard that yet about from any of my guests, but I'm a good snuggler. And here's a harder question. What's one thing that you wish Daddy did better? You could be honest. Stay home with me. Stay home with you. You wish I was home more with you? I love spending time with you, but we get to go on lots of vacations and stuff together, yeah. huh? I sure love you. I sure love you too. Thanks for being a guest on my podcast. You're welcome. It's super fun to have you. Thanks. It was fun to be here. Do you know what I always say at the end of my podcasts? What? I always say, thanks for coming to Enchilada Nation. And don't forget, go live life on your terms. Say thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. <laughs> thanks, everybody.